very good evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and welcome once again to the Power Talk Show. We have been having a variety of conversations this year on this platform and the year is just about to end. Lakini, kuna vitu zinye tuliko tumesema tutafanya, there's so many goals we set out, there's so many things that we have wanted to achieve and unfortunately we may not have been able to achieve all of that. So today I want us to talk about what are some of the things that are causing us not to be as successful as we thought we would be or as the previous generations have been. Because there was a time when people were buying houses, buying land, investing, but there has been a bit of a slow in uh, those, those regards in terms of investing and the success rate has gone a bit lower, particularly for the millennials and the Gen Z. I want us to have that conversation this evening and joining me live here on set is Kennedy Otieno, who is a CPA, a certified public accountant, right? Karibu Ken, ukwaje? Niko mzima. Yeah, unakatu uko mzima. Pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and right next to Kennedy, we have Ian Scott, who is not a first time guest. Karibu tana Ian. Thank you again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> Always. One thing we like to say is once you've come on here, we are family. So Ken. Yes, Be yes, prepared. Yes. Any family power talk. <laughs> <laughs> so this evening I want us to have this conversation because it's something that I think so many people have been struggling with. The success rate has gone lower. There's a lot of pressure of Kuomoka who make it and there are just certain things that are making it not be possible partly because of the economy partly because of the social life the political scene as well has been something that has been a hindrance to that and i want to hear from you as we proceed with this conversation what are some of the causes of this you can go on our social media platforms at y254 and let us know what you think about do you think it's hard for both millennials and gen z to make it in life do you think it's become harder for this, particularly these two generations, millennials and Gen Z? So that's from the, let's say, mid-1980s to the present. Is it harder for the millennials and Gen Z to make it in life as compared to maybe our parents or our grandparents and the generations that were there before? Go on our social media platform, Sahi, at Y254, and let us know what you think. Tell me experience, a comment, anything that you have to add, and we will sample that as we progress. So, I don't know, let me, let me start with the experts. Ken, I'm wondering, there are so many ways that we can define success, but what would you define as success? Mm, thanks, Cheryl. Uh, just to say, success is a relative and uh, based on one perception I think uh, it involves so many in terms of growth, in terms of uh, development, in terms of uh, uh, empowerment, in terms of uh, uh, education, training. So definitely it involves a lot. Yeah. So probably uh, that's my view on success. Yeah. yeah. And it's definitely relative. It cuts across because you can be successful in different areas. Yeah. Ian, what about you? What would you define as success? Basically, I believe success is, um, how can I put it? Success is individual, right? What you term as success is not what I term as success. Um, if you term as just having one car, that success to you, then you'd say you're successful. If I term having 20 cars is success for me, that's my success. I'd say now I'm successful. What you feel is low for you isn't what's low for me. So I believe like success is relative to oneself, one's percep perception, if I may say. Um, basically, I feel like that's just expounding on what um, Ken has just already pointed out. Yeah, yeah. it's very relative because success for one person is different for someone else. Yeah. Maybe one person wants to own 50 cows and that's the definition of success another person wants to own five cars <laughs> and that's the definition it's very relative and ken you've you've mentioned something important it cuts across different fields it's not just about financial success it can be educational maybe uh, spiritual even based on your family life but most of us look at success from the perspective a uh, perspective of uh, money Kama si pesa, 
see success <laughs> you know <laughs> most people want to to look at it from the the perspective of the economy of how much do i have what what do i have going on how much assets are in my name under my protection yes, okay. and all those things so as an accountant ken why would you say so many people look at success from the point of the 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 assets they have the physical maybe the the money in their account and all those physical things uh, kwanza utapata ya kwamba wakati mtu ana anatoka shule okay first uh, most people ama most uh, uh, people have the education that uh, you, you see when you are growing up you are being told in order to uh, have a good life have a good uh, 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 place to stay or you must have gone to school mm -hmm. and through school you will be able to to achieve whatever you want so uh, you will find uh, most uh, the millennial and the gen z through education, they believe that you become successful. But we see that most Gen Z and part of the middle, some have good education. But now you find uh, achieving it or having what we call a suc uh, successful life is the opposite. Because you'll find someone uh, has all the degree, the masters, but still tamaking. Yeah. So what do you say about that? And that just we have said part of spiritual success. Mm -hmm. So it 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 cuts across. So when when as much as we believe that education is good, it's only a key that open for you ways to achieve or the purpose God has has for you yeah. in this life. Mm -hmm. So I do believe. Uh, uh, It's relative still, mm. yeah. So it's still relative. And yeah. as a, as an accountant, I see that uh, most people, example like a doctor, why do doctor nowadays have their own business compared to previously where you, you just where you have been employed and that is just where you you focus specialization you specialize. If you are a surgeon, you don't think even opening a clinic or uh, having any other business or even building rental. Why is it? Why do we have now the current doctors? Someone has opened a clinic yet he's employed Aga Khan, Nairobi Hospital, or even uh, other public hospital. Uh, so you find, uh, you, uh, due to the pressure of life, you find people now opening mind due to, you need to have other sources of income yeah. to, to meet your daily obligation. Mm. Uh, suppose you had one family and again you had another family, again the pressure coming, the pressure of life. You find yourself now, you need to provide more to these people yeah. and you find now through that uh, uh, having other sources of income, you will find yourself now accumulating more more yeah. asset, more asset in order to meet your daily obligations. Mm. Yeah. So perhaps it's because of the need. Yeah, yeah. You have responsibilities, you have bills, you yeah. have people you're taking care of. Yeah. So people want to have financial success so they can be able to take care of all these things. Their social life. And I like that you've brought about education because one thing that we have always been taught Ukisoma ukwe number one, <laughs> unakuwa sonko. <laughs> that was the constant thing. Exactly. Our parents used to tell us the way they used to be number one, to do what, topic the classes. And that was the only way we were made to believe, mm. or most of us rather were made to believe, that's the path of success. You have to be educated. And if we look at the past, if someone was a teacher even, in the early 90s, in the late 80s, teachers were well respected. Very, very doctors were even compensated. Doctors, <laughs> just by that alone, <laughs> you were chemists. Yeah. 
watu wana kuogopa you know if you're a lawyer all these things they were they were well compensated in the past but these days madaktari wako kwa streets walimu wako kwa streets then the people the businessmen or the people who are considered as most times we have there's this theory of people who are the, the D's and the number last <laughs> aundo CEO wa kampuni yeah. and then they turn around to employ machopi the A students and all that and that's some reality we've seen in so many different spaces yeah the people who went off started businesses and they're more successful than the people who got into different industries ian why do you think that is na when you squeeze what to you have to pursue that degree you have to pursue that that masters but why is it that sometimes people who are not as educated or as smart are the ones who are perceived to be more successful in these days as opposed to the past um for me i think that it's all about the mindset because um, and also the system of education, uh, because uh, currently the country is transitioning from the 844 to the CBC curriculum, right? We look at the 844 whereby the three of us, we passed through the 844 system, right? Yes. Yeah. What was 844? In primary, you have to know science, math, English, Kiswahili. What was the fifth one? Social studies. Kwaizo mm. Tano, you'd have to get 400 marks and above. Yeah. If you if you don't get 400 marks and above, you're not going to Alliance. Yeah. You're not going to the Starray Boys Center of the country. You're not going to the Machakos Boys, etc., etc. Right? For, we were taught success is academic, pure, purely academic from an early age. Once you transition to high school, now you have to learn eight subjects. Right? You have to learn the chemistry, the physics. You have to learn the English. You have to learn the history. If you don't, now high school was whereby now it was like if you fail to make it to the university it's doomsday yeah <laughs> like it's doomsday like that's it i remember there's a set book uh, that we used to do in high school uh, if i can remember the name correctly it was written by the late great ken walibora it was um tumbulisilo shiba there's a guy there who failed his high school exams his final exams he tried to commit suicide right yeah. So even from the publications that we are being taught in school, <coughs> we are being taught that um, our success is purely academic. Once yeah. I, I guess the only part whereby we who went through the 844 system, what are being exposed really to the outside world is maybe when you're in uni. When you're in mm -hmm. uni, you get to meet different people. You get to meet people, for example, um, if I'm doing, uh, if I'm par currently doing a degree in journalism, right? Uh, I have friends who are doing economics. I have friends who are doing um, psychology. I get to grasp that little knowledge from them. Whatever they talk to me about what they are doing right now, I get to grasp just a little bit of content that gets me by, like I'd say, oh, so economics, we have value of scale. We have uh, how we read the markets. I know that. Psychology, we know that we have behavioral theories. And I'd like, yeah, I know it. Same as from me, they know like, um, if I'm doing journalism, it's public opinion and propaganda. They do know that, right? Mm. So that's where we actually widen our scope. That's why you get that a lot of people uh, in uni is whereby people start like really investing, really investing. Yeah. Because even after Form 4, uh, once the so-called or perceived D student uh, is out of high school, now they get exposed to the outside world. And the, that chain of command, that chain of command in their brain that uh, my success is purely academic, it's broken. It's yeah. really broken, right? Mm. But right now we're in the CBC. CBC, it's actually uh, meant to develop the youngsters from an early age. If you're good with IT, if you're good with laptops from the age of 10, then we know that you can actually be an IT specialist. We know you can actually be that software engineer. Yeah. It's not that you are, maybe you are a great orator and we are forcing you to become a doctor. Seriously, that's even strenuous on the head, right? True. You're not, you might be good with numbers, but your parents want you to be a teacher. Yeah. an English teacher, right? So I feel like it all boils down to the um, system of education that the current generation, basically the Gen Z and the millennials have been through to know what the Gen Alphas are going through the competency-based curriculum. It's different. Yeah. And you know, when, you, when you're stuck in a system, it's hard to change that system. You just have to accept and move along with it. And as we progress with this conversation, Nataka Kujua from you guys, why do you think it's harder? Or do you even think it's harder for the Gen Z and the millennials to be successful these days? That's the question I've asked you on our social media platforms. Let us know what you think about this conversation as we progress with it. And I like that you've brought out the aspect of it's the systems. 
Because when we even compare with different nations, in Africa, in Kenya, education is emphasized. When you go to Asia, when you go to India, business is emphasized. As much as they'll tell you, girls should be doctors, boys should be engineers. But they're taught about business. They're taught to run the business of the family from a young age. When we go to Europe, it's a different system. You're encouraged to be uh, more free thinking. You're encouraged to be innovative. When you go to China, it's the same. So ha what's the role of culture on the impact of success? Ken, what would you say is the role of culture on the impact of, of success for these different age groups? Because you find that you a European might be more successful faster at even maybe 20 they are bought they've bought assets they have land they have cars they have all these things and at 20 in kenya uyondonenge university maybe ako second year na bado na struggle through even just making it day by day yeah. so what's the role of culture on success if we go back look at uh, the late 1960 80 Mm. If, uh, if you look at uh, African culture, you will find our grandfathers, our fathers, uh, our fathers who are in 80s, 90s, how were they socializing? Whatever you have is kind of belong to the whole family, the whole community. And when uh, Ian is to take dowry, you will find the uncle, the brother to father, would give him a cow or even something to, to go take dowry. So yeah. it's kind, you are of the community. And when you have a problem, it's kind, all the family, all the community will come in to and they will perceive when you are successful, when you have all this and you are sharing. Yeah. Not all this and you keep it you to yourself. Realize. Are you seeing? So why is it that is it different with the current? Just the way you have said, the need and the pressure of life. Currently, you will find uh, most of us who are in 20s, 30s, why are they struggling to make it? A good example, uh, you will find how did these people, apart from if a young man would like to take a dowry, uh, uh, be, be assisted, you will find when we had now people coming to town, example Nairobi, how were they acquiring wealth? They were forming cooperative. If you find six, ten people forming a cooperative in order to buy land and build. How, how do we, if you look at this building we have along Moy Avenue, Tombe Avenue, Kenyatta Avenue, you will find it is not, it's not belonging to one person. It's kind of a cooperative. They come together, they take a loan, and they build. And when they build, any income received from that, they share. But nowadays, you want to make it alone. You don't want to make it alone. How will you make it alone? You'll have to struggle in terms of saving. Will you have enough saving for three million in order to? But when you have mm -hmm. 50, I bring Kennedy, bring 50. Cheryl, bring 50 or 100. Then we have a pool. We can do things together. Yeah. And that's why you see some of these uh, children of this guy who had cooperative building, some even are fighting. But because these people had uh, agreement and uh, uh, structure, it is hard even to go uh, get it yourself. Yeah. But with us, I want to make it alone. Now pressure is there. Mm. I want to do it alone. How will you do it? I need a job. I need my own money in order to have a car, in order to have buy land, in order to build rentals. It becomes hard yeah. when you are selling. But when you pull together, and that's the difference. Even nowadays, if you now want to take my uh, dowry, I tell you, you're going to struggle. Him alone. <laughs> it's different from the, from the previous the people. So 
pooling resources together. That's why the previous guy were able to make it our fathers and the grandfathers. They were able after the colonial people, they were able to make it the shortest time possible because they were pulling resources together. Mm. Then after that we find now, as we came, or even our elder brother, we are in 40s, 50s, early 50s, late 40s, early 40s, even the 30 people, you want to make it alone. How will you make it alone? Mm. So again, that, there's no that empowerment among the Gen Zs. Yeah. You see, these people are being empowered. If they go to, they, they sit together, they encourage one another and say, if you go to the bank, bank will give this loan yeah. and you're able to do this kind of investment. But with the young generation, you want it now, now, now. Immediate. Immediate. Mm. And they struggle now because of pressure. You find now they engage in other activities that are not productive yeah. into their life and even also to them. Then also mm. the, pot the political environment we have is not conducive to the, NGs, to the Gen Zs. Yeah. So you find uh, when there's a lot of political uh, uh, issues and rest, mm. it becomes hard even for these young people because look at our country, economy is very, very slow. Mm. Suppose the government had open industries where these people are able, they wake up and they know, I'm going to do, I'm going for a job. Mm. And within the job, they have a circle, they have a community. Yeah. As much as it is there, but you find economy is very slow. How how will they make it? So if it you find, difficult. as much as it is there, and ha, his or her heart is not there, moyo wake na rowak aiko kwa yo iya kazi yo cooperative ya kazi. Because that appear kwa kwa yo yo lono na pewa ikidogo. So by the time una una you you want it something that ought to have taken you ten years, you want it within one year or within one and a half year, it becomes hard. I, I like that you've brought out that aspect because the truth is so many youth do not even understand how cooperatives and circles work. Many, many, many. We are not even aware of the presence of some of these circles. And what you've said about people wanting to make it on their own. Kuna yo pressure. Unataka ku prove that mimi ni self-made. You know, <laughs> there's, that, there's that pressure that people have of wanting to just prove that they did it by themselves without being helped by so, so, and so. Yes. And it doesn't always work like that. Doesn't it work. makes it much harder for you to be successful. And the reality is the cases of self-made people who are successful is very small. Most of them have backing that we are not aware of. Exactly. Most of them did not start from ground zero. They had investors. They had people believe in them to support their dreams. Yeah. Ian, as a youth, as a Gen Z who's, you know, you're still in these spaces where you're talking to other guys who are still in campus, people who are still women's a job, you're in that space, and even maybe some younger generation. Una feeling your pressure ya could be self-made. Do you think it's easy for you to sit with your boys and tell them, let's have a, let's have a group? Because they'll think of it as a chama. So is it easy for you to say, let's come together and form a cooperative and then work towards a certain goal or do you feel the pressure to be self-made and um funnily enough uh, i was just talking to my friends about like the whole cooperative thing the whole and i quote chama thing uh which is actually a great idea yeah and then again mostly when you're in uni uh, a lot of people have have actually um absolved themselves from the businesses that are actually employable. Most of them are self-employed and most of them are actually creating somewhat of a consortium, right? Yeah. Um, you'd find that I write, maybe um, you're my classmate, you're my schoolmate, you're my friend. I'd ask you, hey, do you want to know how to write? Do you, are you even interested? There's some good money to, make, to be made here. Are you interested? Then I'd teach you. I'd ask again, um, how do you feel about writing? Uh, because I have a lot of assignments. I taught Cheryl. Uh, she's actually pretty good at it. She's been making a killing out of it. Uh, she'd also be really interested in teaching you and actually helping you like know how the, the things to do, the things not to do when you're writing an academic transcript. Mm. Would you like to know? Yes, he'd be part of it. Mm. We're three of us. That's somewhat of a consortium. I yeah. feel like that's somewhat of a cooperative because from we are actually sharing among the three of us the spoils from that particular business mm. so basically 
that's it. Mm. Yeah. So it's like on a small scale, it exists. It exists. It exists. Mm. Don't, don't get me wrong. But still, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword. There's, there's this, the pressure that you have to be self-made. That uh, There's a point um, you'd actually say, um, and I quote, uh, William say, William say, Alikuwa natembea tu hivi hivi ona sasa anaenda shagari. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know you know these are things yeah. we talk we talk about it's the reality. These are things that we actually talk about. Ah. Uh, eh yule msali alikuwa anatembea tu kimchezo mchezo akienda mess. Sasa hii ameomoka. Sasa hii anaenda sha Q5 Audi. Yeah. You know like and you're, yeah that's self made. What's that? That's perception. You know like this is actually mental. Yeah. Uh, we say success is, is a mentality. Yeah. Poverty is a mentality. Shame is a mindset. And I'll, I'll be like, um, if he did it, I also want to do it, mm. right? And I'll actually feel a little bit selfish. I'd not actually want to share the secrets of how I've done it yeah. with my peers. There comes in the phrase, me God. Mm. And there's a lot of that going around. I feel like, let, I want us to take a very short break, but when I come back, I want us to talk about the pressure, the peer pressure the pressure from social media, the perception, and what Ken said about us wanting quick success. We want it instantly. Atutaki could take time, at it to grow a manini. So let's take a very quick break, and we will come back with more on this conversation. But meanwhile, go on our platforms at Y254. Tell us, do you think it's harder for the millennials and the Gen Z to make it in this day and time? When you factor in everything, the economy, political scene, social scene, technology, do you think it's harder for the millennials and Gen Zs to make it in life? Let me take a short break, but stay tuned to White 54 TV.